children has already built in with the algorithms to grasp things around internalize it processes its thinking by observing listening sensing doing and the list goes on in general she moves from forming of ideas to performing which helps in developing child's own knowledge and may create variations of expressions based on it shown here is just an example of computational thinking so computational thinking is not something new or will be learnt only in schools but at the same time ct in school curriculum enhances the child to channelize or to organize those abilities and skills so that it helps the child to attack problems of the digital era keeping this in mind here by going to present my paper The Tamil Nadu state government has taken a lead to implement the infusion of CTE in math in a phased manner for primary classes. We began the process by understanding the vision of math curriculum as stated by the math position paper of the state curriculum. It envisions that school is a place where children learn to enjoy math, pose and solve meaningful problems understand the basic structure of math learn to argue and pursue assumptions to logical conclusions relate math to life experiences and talk math the teachers are expected to engage every child in class having this as vision we began the journey with the process of infusion we as child supporters or educational thinkers and doers knew that the child makes meaning from different things around especially the primary class children make meaning through sensory aspects such as through repeatedly listening observing things around keenly touching smelling and tasting they also make meaning through different forms of aesthetic senses such as from rhymes songs dramas stories and so on having set the context by understanding the nature of the children now the question that arises is how do we link it with the math curricular goals we have infused computational thinking through a lot of activities to help them think about their thinking i would like to share you some examples of ct activities from textbook seriating sequencing sorting iterating patterns finding relationships doing transformations organizing finding all possible ways to solve selecting relevant by eliminating irrelevant setting rules recognizing and creating patterns of sound body movements color shape and the combinations of some of those this matters a lot as understanding of relationship between the concepts could be experienced only through such activities for example the plan of the maze activity is to make the children to plan to choose the path follow the chosen track remember it if some block is found on the path then come back by detracking it then follow different track and the process gets iterated these strategies help a lot in real life problems too and especially to children who are in fear of math maze activity though has the objective to reach the destination correctly but it paves the path to understand about direction orientation turning the object about path locations so the understanding of these helps in understanding the spatial relationship leading to construction of networks in topology or graph theory so to develop meaning making the learning from these activities must be connected at multiple levels at different instances of time this maze activity can be connected to map activity and blindfolding activities to talk math to follow the instructions by listening to move in right directions to seek help from peers to ensure whether the blindfolded child is in right direction by asking questions to relate to spatial recognition by sensing and then to identify shapes by comparing the features by touching the object to the shapes already in her mind to use a lot of meaningful vocabularies 
by sensing the object these step by step process lead to zero down to identify the object by justifying that because of x y z reasons it should be this object it is also to sensitize that how the visually challenged people could face such real life problems for example activities are not only to do explore things to connect the ideas to represent things to link the child's context but also to feel free to question to express their ideas argue reason out to justify by involving the process of transformations from assumptions to logical conclusions i mean to do math to play math to dance math to talk math to discuss math to argue math to sense math and to make math their own knowledge how why and what do the infusion of these ct activities has to do with the math concepts should be known to every teacher otherwise the activities will only be treated as activities and may at the worst may depend on the guide books available in the market which may not serve the purpose of this infusion at all the teacher development programs should happen at every stage and at every level on a regular basis along with the supporting materials such as supplementary resources both in online and offline for the teachers on the purpose behind these activities must be made available along with the discussion forums and conferences like these would usual assessment methods and tools work for this the issue is that usual assessment test mostly whether answer is right or wrong focuses on the product rather than the process for example if the child is asked to count and answer how many what if the child gets the answer as 9 what if the child gives answer as 11 where is the space for the question paper to prompt her to think or to ensure that she counted everything only once what is this assessment method or tool having to do with learning or enhance learning or identify what's the process that went in the minds of the child if the assessment is for learning and when the learning happens through different forms of activities then the assessment methods and tools also need to be changed assessment must be done while doing activities with the questions to make the children think about their process of thinking only then it enhances learning say if a teacher must assess the pattern of sound how can she assess it in question paper by giving diagram of instruments in some sequence or letters like sa re ga ma would that be fair instead the teacher must make sound pattern maybe with available objects the children should be made to interpret that and then they should make sounds to show variations in sound to follow the teacher's pattern and also produce variations in rhythms or create patterns in sound only through this the teacher can assess the variations or logic of their understanding of pattern in a way it is paperless assessment children should feel the exams as light as yeah anticipate eagerly as festive season now having said all these it means that the content shouldn't be rigid because it is ct it should be flexible to align to the context with variations right the tamil nadu government has begun the process of revising and redesigning the content to align to the post pandemic situation i would like to conclude my presentation citing the evaluation paper on assessment thank you namaskar to all educators and uh, uh, dignitaries present over here i am rohini khapade from school of scholars sakola i have been teaching mathematics from last 15 years in the school now i want to tell me uh, uh, tell you about this uh, about my school my school is a school of scholars akola which started operating from 2003 now more than 3500 students are studying from nursery to 12 about 110 teachers are 
teaching in my school out of them 15 mathematics and computer teachers are implementing cs partial syllabus as you know according to the 2020 uh, nep problem solving skill is the 21st century skill and cs partial helps in developing uh, this problem solving skill among the students using the computational thinking approach so when i thought of uh, making geometry easy for my students i tried to implement computational thinking um, for making the geometry geometry easy because when i came across the students the students have are good at mathematics still have a fear of solving the geometrical uh, geometry problems because they thought that they are unable to apply the theorems properly so when i studied this uh, problem i found out that when the theorems are taught in the class the proof explanation is given given more emphasis rather than making students understand the theorem and theorems as the theorem statements are neglected students are unable to understand it and the problem solving using those theorem becomes very very difficult for them so for ninth standard i chose the midpoint theorem uh, the for the midpoint theorem also the same thing happens the the figure is drawn the statement is told and then told that how to uh, construct a, a, a line segment and then join them and then prove congruency and then solve but in this whole process the theorem uh, statement gets neglected and the students are unable to apply it whenever that situation arises in the problem solving so i have i have selected 24 students of 9th grade again i uh, took uh, the th midpoint theorem in consideration as it is an online uh, online class i uh, took help of geogebra tool the activity took 40 minutes the let me tell you the statement for the uh, for the midpoints theorem first a line segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and half of it for the teachers and for the educators it might be a very easy statement but for the students and others it it is a very complicated statement so what i have done is i have divided it into small uh, facts small small chunks then converted that into a set of instructions step by step instructions were uh, uh, given to the students and then those instructions i have asked students to follow using geogebra then uh, find out practically what are your observations write down your observations and from those observations i have asked them to make a final statement and then uh, we collected all those uh, uh, statements and shared with all the students and a generalization happened in the class using the discussions so i can show you uh, the instructions given that uh, when these instructions are given uh, i have taken the geogebra tool into consideration so uh, for each uh, step they have a tool to use draw a triangle of your choice then i have asked them to take midpoints of the two sides of any two any two sides of the triangle then join the midpoints measure the angles and then uh, every time they have to uh, they have to write their observations and then uh, think of what relation could be there between the line segment and the third side and then uh, what is their final observation they have to write the um, write the final statement in their own language i can show you one of the students uh, statement over here now the, he has done this uh, with the right angle triangle and he said that in right triangle a line segment joining the midpoints is parallel to the third side and as corresponding as the corresponding angles are equal so variety of statement came uh, came to me and uh, i am sharing two of the statements with you some of them have stated made the statement for scalene some of them have done for equilateral isosceles right angle variety of triangles they have drawn and then um, when uh, when we uh, collected all those statements on a google uh, document and they are shared in the class then uh, i have asked students that what are the facts which you think are common in all these statements so they found out that the uh, variety of triangles are there but all are the triangles so we can avoid uh, giving the specifications about the uh, triangles and then 
uh, we may uh, remove the corresponding as the corresponding angles are equal they are parallel because uh, parallelity of the of the lines is important rather than corresponding angles and then they have also uh, decided that they will be writing any triangle uh, in place of uh, right angle triangle or isosceles triangle also they have uh, some of them have uh, measured the length so other also tried in their own um, figure that whether their lengths are giving the same relation or not and then the final statement was made that in any triangle line segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is a parallel uh, is parallel to the third side and half of, half of it so we have reached to the final statement which is quite uh, similar to the given statement and so they were able to remember this statement for the longer time now because they have made the statement at their own by their observations uh, to find out the impact of this activity the next day students were divided into six groups and were asked to apply the midpoint theorem to the quadrilaterals so six of five out of six groups applied the theorem by dividing the quadrilateral into two triangles and were able to frame a statement joining the midpoints of the adjacent sides of a quadrilateral a parallelogram is formed then i have asked them how they have decided that this statement is the correct statement so they have told that when what approach they have uh, um, applied so they told me that as we have used the midpoint theorem in the triangles only we have decided to divide the quadrilateral into triangles so they have drawn the diagonal and when they drawn the diagonal they got the two triangles in each triangle two midpoints were available so they have joined the those two midpoints and easily they were able to apply the midpoint theorem and then they said that ef is parallel to bd and hg is also parallel to bd so the two sides are parallel to the same side so they are parallel to each other so some of them drawn bd some of them drawn ac and they observed that in the parallelogram the the two pairs of the opposite sides are in the quadrilateral the two pairs of the opposite sides are parallel they got and so it is a parallelogram that was their final decision so now i found out that students have applied the midpoint theorem properly they have used the step by step uh, step by step approach and also abstraction can be observed by because they have avoided the mention of the midpoint theorem in in the in the statement so um, some students preferred uh, one diagonal other students preferred another diagonal so they have successfully apply, applied the theorem whatever they have done in it so uh, i thought of that i have uh, successfully implement uh, successfully able to inculcate this uh, step by step approach and abstraction amongst them i can share these observations with you uh, of the students and some feedbacks also are given by the students and uh, from this i have decided that because my students are able to apply the midpoint theorem i will be using this approach for other theorems also and my students also shown uh, the uh, shown the interest in geometry so this uh, approach uh, this systematic approach i am going to take forward for the uh, next uh, next year also i thank you all my uh, all my seat, uh, my school uh, colleagues my school i thank my uh, ctis for making this possible to present my presentation in front of you i thank you my school my students and my mentor for making uh, me able to present in front of you thank you very much